Okay, welcome back. We've had some connection issues again, not surprisingly. Um, it's a little unstable. But anyway, let's get right into it. So, just over here, I have my trading Python. I started with a Type 6, traded up to an ASP, and then traded up to the Python. I used the Python to trade up to the Anaconda. And then finally, I uh, used the Anaconda to earn the money for another Python. So this is my second Python. My Anaconda is docked somewhere else. And um, and then I traded this up to about 60, 70 million. And it's just, a, like I say, you're earning 8 million in half an hour. Okay? 8 million in half an hour. It's a lot better than my first video where I was doing that in an hour, so it's twice as good. Um, and it effectively gives you the freedom to just fly any ship in the game and actually think about buying the really nice modules. And then when you go into open play, you've got a lot more freedom because you can lose your ship without it meaning the end of your game. Okay? Because I still, I like the risk in this game, but I think that you should be able to earn a bit of security. Okay? So anyway, um, I'm going to try and split this up into parts because my internet connection dropping so many times. So part one, we're going to take a look at the ship, all right? Now I'm going to put links in the description and those links uh, will be Coriolis fittings. So you can click on them, you can click on the ship, you can compare them, you can see exactly what modules I've got fitted. Um, and then you can compare those with your own fittings. So. We're going to look at the Python, okay, but I'm going to have the Type 6, the ASP, and a couple of other ships which we were comparing. I only used the Type 6 and the ASP, but you can use Cobra, you can use various other things. So, we're going to look at the Python right now, and I'm going to, like, obviously I'd say the ASP has got a lot more freedom, and the Type 6 is the cheapest and most economical, like, because if you lose a, use a Type 6, it doesn't matter. Really doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, the, the insurance payout is next to nothing, even with a, a full, you know, the best fit for the job. So, let's get out of this and take a quick look in outfitting. So, here we have the Python. Now, the reason I like Python is because, despite its short range, um, it's actually got an amazing cargo. Uh, and the options for the loadout. So let's just take a quick look. I'm going to go through this really quickly and explain the finer points as we go across them. So you got three mine launchers for interdictions. If you do get pulled out and you didn't submit, there are a few times where you can end up having to wait on that FSD cooldown. Now you just fly in a straight line. The AI can only follow you. And when he does... You just drop all the mines in his face. You get really good at it. You have to practice, but once you've got it, it's actually easy, it's easier than shooting them, because they will chase you. You're the only person there. You might be in trouble if there's more than one. <laughs> That's the only time this method had a bit of trouble, but you, you essentially boost and hit chaff to stop him from hitting you, and then you drop mines in their face. And usually they just keep flying into them and explode. I wouldn't be surprised if one day that the game developers change the behavior of the AI to make it more challenging. But at the moment, it's very rare for them to dodge the mines. They just keep flying into them and they either run away when they're low damage um, or um, they, or, or well, or they die. So that's the hard points explained. Utility mounts is pretty self-explanatory. You got the chaff launcher. That's to stop people from shooting at you. Uh, and if and missiles, things like that, just hit the chafts. Very effective against most of the uh, pirates that try to get you. For the core internal, um, it's all about saving weight while giving us good jump range. So we've got the best jump drive we can get on here. Uh, and then a defit mostly okay uh with a downsized power distributor because less weight 16 tons and a downsized power plant which again is 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 barely this is this is as low as it can go you go any lower than this and you're either not going to have enough power to boost um 
or it just well it just won't just won't work so like i say two and a half tons for the 3a which um it gives me 25 light years unladen which is when you're going when you're going home uh and then 17.25 on the way there because i found that you don't have a jump if you don't like i say you we're not going to take a fuel scoop okay which you'll see in a sec and all these fittings are going to be in the description so okay so we've got 364 slot 132 a 4d shield generator which really that's just like a crash that's like an impact zone this is not a combat ready shield you should not be relying on it this is more for oh whoops i hit the station mouth trying to dock or i hit the dock trying to land you know this this shield is um a lip service at best so we're going to go with the 4c fuel tank that gives us 48 tons of fuel that's enough for us to just fly straight there no fuel scooping saves a lot of time um and like i say what you want is speed you want to get in and out really fast i always take my vehicle hanger because every now and then I, I don't mind landing on planets once you practice it actually isn't much slower than landing in a station so i find leaving the planet takes longer sometimes but um there are ways of doing it that it's all about time essentially how many runs can you fit into an hour because the difference between two and three runs is you, you know not it's not very much difference um you know because you're talking about 15 minutes there 15 minutes back that's one run 15 minutes there 15 minutes back two runs if you can do it in 10 minutes that's 20 and then you get three runs in the hour and obviously if you're doing 8 million per run well that's the difference between 16 and 24 million so anyway you know thinking about it like a trucker so you've got to get those deliveries in so anyway standard docking computer because you're going to be docking so many times you really don't want to waste but you can fly into the station with and then slow down and then it'll auto dock just the last bit which i find is the fastest way to do it um the advanced discovery scanner is actually so that if you get sent to a system and they don't have um it hasn't been discovered yet it happens every now and then the game will give you places inside the uh inside the um controlled space even and it, it, no one's been there or you don't have the data so it might just be you have to go there the first time and it's not shared i, I don't know but um either way i found one click and i can find it anywhere in the system with this thing so that's what you want um and yeah so the total cargo on this is 224 tons I never take the full 224. I usually aim for about 200, and then that keeps the minimum jump range up. So it never goes quite that low. But on your way to the first drop, you should be fine. Okay. Because um, obviously you're going to use a lot of fuel on the way there, which means by the time you've made your first drop, you're able to uh, uh, get a lot more performance out of the ship. So, I hope that covers the the, the, the loadout, okay? Um, so, I'm going to risk moving on into the actual mission board, okay? So, the mission board is a sort of... It's got a lot of traps. There's, a lot, there's, there's traps in the mission board. You see, it'll always say that they're going to send people after you, but it doesn't always... Well, if it does, I've never seen them. Oh, they, I'm sure they do come at you, but... Anyway. So if I just show you a couple of these... These guys I've got good standing with, but they got no missions. These guys I don't have very good standing with. I'm cordial, which is just above zero, really. Um... And like, as you can see here, 50 units for 2 million going to Batas. But I already know Batas, Pickering Dock. These are all horrible, and I'll show you why. If I go into the galaxy map and look up Batas, 
Okay. There it is. It's locked in already. I was just looking at it. This is why I know. I'm not psychic. Um, even though I've done hundreds of runs now, I, you know, they, I, you'll never know all the systems. There's too many. So here we go. Arata, Friedman, Watchman. Pickering. There it is. I think that was the one. Pickering Dock. Was that it? Yeah, I think that was it. So 340,000 light seconds away, guys. That's a lot of flight time. That's going to eat into your 15 minute run. Yeah, because bearing in mind, it takes you 15 minutes to get to this star system. If it takes you another 15 minutes just to get to this dock, well, that's ridiculous, isn't it? That means it's half an hour, which is half as profitable. So if you're all about making the money, you want to reduce the distance. So basically, I just throw Batas out because there are no stations which I'm interested in delivering to. And look, all the missions of a Batas. So this is the sort of thing that will pop up. They're tricking you because they're like, oh, you can take, look at all this money. There's like five million there. You could get that all, all I could get all that on board my ship and then some. I got 224 tons. So if I go, what, well, look. Yeah, 150 tons there. 158 tons. Two, three, four, four and a half million. Just for that. The tr and they're all going to bat us. Uh, but, I, but, but because it's 340,000 to each station, that's, so, 15 minutes to get there, 10 minutes to get to this station, 10 minutes to get from that station to this station, another 10 minutes from this station to that. I mean, sure, you could plan it so that you go from the station to the next closest station. But um, it's going to take you 40 minutes to get around these. So it looks good, but it's not. Okay. So those are the things you got to watch out for. So um, Zendi Mob are great. They're, um, they're anarchy. So I like to support them and the other system. That's just what I do. I like to, I like to work for both sides. So they're working for these guys. And it kind of keeps it going, I found. It's like a bubbling, bubbling, you know, you bubble it over. Whoa! Where's my missions gone? She had missions a minute ago and they're gone. Anyway, these guys are new. I don't know who they are. Half a million for 20 units is kind of chump change to me, but I've never been to GAT. So let's take a look at GAT as an example. So you open up the galaxy map and we're going to click on GAT. There it is. GAT. No. Uh, oh. Yes, there we go, right. Okay, so solid yellow line means that I can make it here without having to refuel. That's great. And 113 light, right. We go inside. We've got system map data, which is nice. So I can have a little, I can do some uh, recon, as it were. Okay, so here we go. Now, this is the bit that you probably want a pen for, okay, because... It's funny, I remember when games, you had to write down stuff all the time, and now it, like, never happens, but basically it saves you a lot of effort. I mean, if you've got a great memory, you don't need to write it down, okay? <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're just going to jot down the names of the stations which are good, okay? So, for example, these ones at 20 light seconds from the drop-in, that's like, they, they're, you're going to drop in here somewhere. And you'll fly there in a in under a minute. Okay, probably 30 seconds actually for these. So basically it's Jewett Port. So Jewett and ARP. ARP Vision. That's beautiful. I like that. Okay, so those two, if I get missions going here, I'm all ears. But if I get missions going to... Oh wait, actually, actually... 4,000 seconds isn't too bad. I find the limit is five, between five and 10,000 because then it starts to become a little bit too much flight time. Um, um, sometimes I'd actually choose a different star system over another station in the same system, which sounds strange, but when you leave these places, you jump straight to the next system. So it's actually quicker than flying from this one to this one, for example. Okay. 
So, like I say, little tips that will maximize your earnings without, you know, without even trying. You could be earning triple what you're on just from doing a little bit more recon. I mean, if this is all really obvious to you, then I'm sorry to go over it like this. But, you know, I'm finding myself writing out paragraphs of tips in the, t in the comments section. And I was thinking, how about we put all of this into one video? Um, or it will end up a couple if, if need be. So, like I say, any station in this system, GAT, is good to go. So we can go back to there. And, and like I say, this only takes you, when, when you know what you're doing, this only takes you a few minutes of coming down the list. Okay? And once you've been down the list, you, you, you know, you get an idea. Sometimes you'll spot systems that you've seen before. Look, everything is for Batus. It's really annoying. Because Batus is a shit run. <laughs> it'll, it'll have me just flying for 20 minutes at a time. Right, now here's... Oh, no, that's too close. I'm looking for things that are over 100 light years as well. That's what I'm looking for. Always the long routes. So we got GAT, 1.2 million. GAT, 1.2 million. See, GAT is actually looking pretty good right now. New Zendi Liberals, got another one for GAT. Who's Kong Zhu? Oh, deliver 30 units of Cobalt for a million credits. Kong Zhu, let's check that out. At the moment, GAT is looking like the one, I think. But like I say, this sort of... Re ah! Here's another thing. Sometimes it'll do this. See the circles over nothing? It's because... I gotta to go to my filters. This, my filters are set up for scoopable stars. But I'm not actually using a fuel scoop at the minute. So let's just change it up. Change it up. I'm gonna. S let's just put them all on. There we go. And now we can see it. Because it's not a scoopable star. So root. Solid line. Yep, we can get there in one in one run. We don't need to scoop or anything. No need to refuel. So that's perfect. So let's take a look at the local system map. Right. Oh, this looks good. 1,000 light years, uh, light seconds even. So that's really close. I like that. So yeah, this is good. Kongzu, and as you can see, there's no other stations that are far away. Unless this hasn't been fully discovered. So I want to be looking for Slayton and Ryasansky. But what I'll do is I'll prioritise GAT first, because I know that, that all the stations here are close to where, the, where you jump in. See, I just, I just really wanted to stress, bat, things like this, you see Batus? Batus is a troll, because he wants you to fly 20 minutes to get to the station once you get to the star itself. So you've got to watch out for those, like, hundreds of light seconds, okay? You don't want to be flying... 400 lights, 1,000 light seconds. But to you, that'll drive you mental really quickly, okay? I, I got caught out a few times, and now I always check. So, we've been over that. <laughs> All right. So then, let's go for this GAT. So, Hardy Station. We'll open up the galaxy map, lock it in, and then we'll take all the ones that we can see going to the GAT. Because we know that place is good. So, yes, I will take the GAT. So, at the moment, that one was 1.2 million, I think. And like I say, you'll quickly see how 8 million in half an hour is not difficult. And if you have the time and, uh, you know, uh, if you want to sit there and play the game, because that's what it is, it's a space tradey game, you know. If you want to sit there, oh, this one looks good. HIP 20277, 125. We'll check that. So first, I'm going to take all the gats. So let's go through here. No gat there. There's a get. There's a gat. 1.2, so up to 2.2. And the missions rotate around as well. So sometimes you'll get a really good run, like my, my